Hello viewers, this is Wagda Ronald taking you through today's tutorial on A-Level Physics and in this tutorial we're going to talk about the solutions to A-Level Physics for UNEP 2019 paper 1 and particularly question 3. So these are the constants you can use while answering this question and I believe by now you have already tried out this question because it's the same question I left in the previous video and I believe by now you are ready to assess yourself and check your progress. So let's get started. Now we, shall, we are going to start with question 3 part A. Part A says, define the following as applied to circular motion. Roman 1, centripet of acceleration, that is one mark. And Roman 2, period, that is also one mark. So just start with a Roman one, where they wanted you to you to define centripetal acceleration, and we shall say centripetal acceleration of a body is the rate of change in velocity of a body moving in a circular path. That was Roman one. Then for Roman two, they wanted you to define period, and we shall say period of a body moving in a circular path is the time taken for by that body. To make one complete revolution so basically that's what they wanted in Roman part A now let's see how marks can be awarded so stating this definition and yourself one mark and also this definition for period correct that is also another one mark now shall go to part B part B Roman 1 says Explain why a cyclist bends inwards while going round a curved path, and that is three marks. So first of all, they want if this is the cyclist, and while taking a certain negotiating a certain corner, he has to bend towards that very curve so that he can negotiate two. Now they want you to explain why he has to bend inwards, and let's see the explanation. So first of all, we shall say that when there is motion in a circle, there must be centripetal force acting on the body and in the direction towards the center of the circular path. So there must be centripetal force acting towards the center of the circular path acting in this direction. In that direction like that. So the frictional force between the tires and the ground provide the necessary centripetal force. What does that mean? It means that now this is where the tire meets the ground. Therefore, this frictional force is what provides the necessary centripetal force. So this force has a moment about the center of gravity G which acts towards the center of the circular path and tends to throw the rider outwards. What does that mean? It means that this force, this frictional force which provides the necessary centripetal force has a moment about this center and that moment is in this direction. So what will happen? It means that that force tends to throw the rider outwards the circular path. So in, in that case, what should be done? The rider has got to lean towards the center of the circular path to create a moment of his normal reaction about his center of gravity which counterbalances the moment due to frictional force. So what does that mean? It means that now that there is this moment, there has to be another moment to neutralize the effect of that moment. So that moment has to be in this direction. This was clockwise, this has to be anti-clockwise. Now for this moment to exist, the rider has to bend such that 
his normal reaction uh, creates a moment about the center of gravity remember if it doesn't bend it means that its normal reaction will pass through the center of gravity meaning there will be zero moment but now that he has bent there will be a moment due to this normal reaction and that means that the, this moment of this centripetal force will be counterbalanced by this moment of the normal reaction and in that case the rider can maintain the motion of the circular path so basically that's what they wanted you to explain and now let's see how marks can be awarded so the first mark is for that that the there must be a centripetal force acting on the body and in the direction towards the center of the circular path for most of the circular motion to occur the another point would be this, this about the centripetal force which is being provided by the friction between the tires of the car and the road another mark would be on when, when you talk about the moment created by that centripetal force and the direction of that moment that is outwards the another mark would be on the other moment of the normal reaction created when the rider leans towards the center and lastly that when you talk about those the effect of these two forces cancelling out in other words balancing to maintain the motion that's when you get you can get the other mark and basically that's how you can get the three marks that were awarded for this question so now we shall go to part b roman 3 and says a body of mass 1.5 kilograms moves once round a circular path not sure what that word once round a circular path to cover 44 centimeters in five seconds calculate the centripetal force acting on the body and they give it four marks So first of all they told us that it moves once round the circular path and that and covers 44 centimeters. What does that mean? It means that this 44 centimeters is equal to the circumference of that circular path or the circle. Therefore we shall come and say that the distance covered is equal to 2 pi r. Therefore 44 you have to change it to meters. So 44 over 100 will be equal to 2 pi r and when I make out the subject I come up with r being equal to 11 over 50 pi and from there I know that my linear speed is equal to distance moved over time therefore the distance will be 0 0.44 which is 44 over 100 divided by time which is 5 seconds and I'll come up with 0 0.088 meters per second now that I have known linear speed which is V, I can come and say that my centripetal force F is equal to mv squared over r and when I substitute I know that m is equal to 1.5 and v is 0 0.088 so I have to square it and I divide by r which is 11 over 50 pi. Now when I use a calculator I will come up with my centripetal force as 0 0.16 five nine newtons so basically that's what they wanted in roman three and let's see how marks can be awarded so first mark is for you to equate this distance covered to the circumference of the circle and when i make our subject to come up with the radius i'll get my another half a mark the next will be for you to get linear speeds linear speed and the final mark using after using calculator will be also another half a mark next is for you to remember the formula for centripetal force and next is for you to substitute in that formula and lastly full mark for half a mark for the magnitude and half a mark for the units so that's how you can get yourself the four marks in that roman so now we shall go to part c part c says define simple harmonic motion and I give it one mark so shall come and say simple harmonic motion is the periodic motion not that word periodic motion 
of a body whose acceleration is towards a fixed point and its magnitude is directly proportional to the displacement from the fixed point. So all those words have to be there. Now we shall go to part D. That was part C. Now let's go to part D. Part D says a body executes simple harmonic motion with amplitude A and angular velocity omega. Roman 1. Write down the equation for the velocity of the body at a displacement x from the mean position. And that is 1 max. So shall come and say the relationship is that v squared is equal to omega squared in brackets s squared which denotes amplitude minus x squared which denotes displacement from the mean position so basically that's what they, what they wanted in roman one now roman two they said sketch the velocity displacement graph for the body for the body in d roman one for omega less than one and they give it to max so shall come and say that the velocity time graph will be the velocity displacement graph will be in that shape. And Roman three they said if the body moves with its amplitude fourteen point one four two centimeters at the at what distance from the mean position will the kinetic energy be equal to the potential energy? So they want the value of x and they give it three max. So first of all you have to know the expression for kinetic energy and the expression for potential energy then we equate the two now kinetic energy is equal to a half m omega squared in brackets r squared minus x squared i think we remember that kinetic energy is equal to half m v squared and the, where there is v squared we put there omega squared a which r which denotes the amplitude squared minus x squared which is that and for this side we shall put the potential energy which is equal to force average force times the displacement where average force is a half m omega squared x multiplied by the displacement which is x to come up with a half omega a half m omega squared x squared now when i equate the two i realize that a half m omega squared can cancel on both sides then i remain with r squared minus x squared where r is the amplitude remember that minus x squared being equal to x squared so whether you can either use r or you use capital a to mean amplitude and is the, and is okay now from there i realize that this one can go this side to become 2x squared to come up with that and when i make x the subject it will be equal to r over root 2 but i know that my amplitude is 14.142 so when i substitute for r i'll come up with my x being equal to 10 centimeters so basically that's the, what they wanted in part c and part d now let's see how max can be awarded so with all those words there period of motion and the directly towards the fixed point then the magnitude being directly proportional to the displacement from the fixed point you'll be able to earn yourself that one mark then for another one, a mark for you to state correctly this formula that is one mark. Then for, for you to write this velocity with this correct unit, this axis with the correct unit, that is also another half a mark. And the correct shape will be that. So basically that's how you can get the two marks. Then I have a mark for you to state the correct formula for kinetic energy for small harmonic motion and correct formula for potential energy for simple harmonic motion. The next is for you to substitute for R and we use the calculator to come up with the correct displacement which they wanted. So basically that's how you can get the three marks for that Roman. So I believe you have marked yourself and checked your progress. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave you with another essay question and that is question 4 for your name paper, physics paper 1 of 2019 for you to check your progress further.
okay so that brings us to the end of this tutorial thank you for watching and be reminded that the solutions to the left assignment you have left will be available in the next video so what you do if you have not yet subscribed please click the subscribe button below so that you can receive updates when the video is released and you'll be able to mark yourself otherwise if you know of any student who is not yet on this platform please use that share button to share this link with as many students as possible via social media like whatsapp and facebook so that we can all excel and benefit as a family from this opportunity